Peterson and Earnhardt. But the track has also witnessed tragedy. It's where Ernie Irvin nearly lost his life after a horrific wreck in August of 1994. Our Marty Snyder spent some time with Irvin and his wife Kim at their farm just outside of Charleston, South Carolina for this week's edition of the Pride of NASCAR. It's your dream come, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> Besides, minus the I understand dogs. you've got a little bit of helper, helper boy, too, right? My yeah. 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 Make sure you mow the lawn. The honeydew list is probably long every day, isn't it? Yes, it is. He actually, uh, what he was still doing retirement, he didn't know he's been putting on your nose. We eat round up. <laughs> That's but. the fun part, isn't it, Ernie? <laughs> When's the fun part start? Right? Fun start. Yeah. So I thought you were, said you were retired. I heard. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. But just don't get the re. Oh. Re. Because it's just you're just tired. <laughs> yes, Ernie Irvin wins the Push 500. He has run so well since taking over this ride, and now it pays off with his first Winston Cup victory. Uh, the Morgan McClure days were were fun days. Is that when you started to say? feel like that you belonged as a top level driver? I'm not a very flamboyant person. I don't say, well, I was this and I wasn't that. I let my driving speak for itself. And, you know, obviously it did. But again, we had some growing pains because, you know, I wanted to to get further. I mean, we I wanted to try to be in contention to win for championships. We talked about the Morgan McClure days as being a good time, but was the time of Robert Yates racing the best time? I mean, I really think so, you know, I mean, obviously, it took my career to the next level. That was a team that had already raced for championships, and mm -hmm. that was something that, you know, I wanted to do. Sure enough, they, they gave me that opportunity. Things happened really good, but we had really good cars, we had, I mean, Larry McReynolds was a great crew chief, and me and him kind of spoke the same language. He could read what I was trying to say, you know. Everybody's got the same opportunity, it's like, Okay, your car's loose or tight or whatever, yeah. but there's a lot of things to do to fix that. And so, me and Larry kind of really hit it off. 94 starts, it just seemed like everything was falling into place, didn't it, for a championship? Things just kept clicking. I think we had won three races already, yeah. and if we keep doing this, we're going to be in good good shape. August 20th, 1994, tell me what you remember about that day. Nothing. I, I kind of remember going to bed. And then I remember 21 days later, and waking up in the hospital and wondering, where the heck am I at? I can speak today, but um, at the time, I mean, I had had a tube in my throat, um, had went through surgeries, and um, had a collapsed lung, and I had a head injury, and they they had me in a, um, a self-induced coma. First thing I kind of remember was because I always had the race on to try to get my memory back mm -hmm. on and the Texco car going by mm -hmm. Kenny Wallace was driving it I'm like the heck's going on here why is Kenny Wallace driving my car you know and then I found out more about what had happened I was trying to find out when I was going to go racing they had told me that if I could ever drive my little girl to school that would be a successful recovery and, and, I, and I'm like, Doc, you don't understand. I want to get back to racing. I mean, I broke down in tears. It's like, you know, it's like, this is what I, this is what I know. This is what I got to do. I was racing Dale Earnhardt for the championship, and, you know, now I'm not going, I'm not going to be able to do it. You get back in the cup car, and success comes again to you. It was a little over a year, I think, before I mm -hmm. raced again. Being able to come back to racing is one thing. But being able to come back and, and win on that level, one part of me thinks that, I mean, I can get back to races, I can win races again. Mm -hmm. But on the other part of me, it's like, you know, that's probably getting a little carried away. You go back to Michigan. Did you ever have to make peace with that turn? No, not really. Because I don't remember it. Right. If, if I remembered all of it, the tire cut down and hit the wall, I don't know if I'd have been able to do it. To come back racing or go back to that track? Bolt. Yeah. Because everybody's like, man, what was it like going back to that corner again? Well, I mean, the, the car was doing this. No, 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 no. What was, what was it like? I don't really remember it. 
the Hollywood, the ending to all of this would be to be able to go back to Michigan and win. Oddly enough, that's the Hollywood ending for this one too. That was the ultimate thing I felt like I could do in my career, is being able to win at the racetrack that almost conquered me. That was the, the win of all wins. Let's go back and talk about the, the second accident in Michigan. But what was going through your mind after that? At that time, I mean, I just, I thought, I don't want to put my family through this again. I don't want to um, struggle with trying to do it again right. and be mediocre. I told Kim, I'm going to retire. Yeah, right. She walked <laughs> off. And, and I said, no, no, you don't understand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire. And I did retire. Mm -hmm. I retired from racing. Mm -hmm. I didn't retire from living. And to prove he hasn't retired from living, Ernie has become a living advocate for others who have suffered brain injuries similar to him. Founding Race to Safety, a nonprofit organization that helps to promote awareness and prevention of head injuries, especially among children. Do you think that you would have traded perfect health for, you know, the success and the career and the money and all that? You never know that, that you would do that. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't had some some things that you step back on, you know, sure. it's like it's really easy to to trade it today. Yeah. If if we don't choose to do some of the wrong things, then maybe maybe we can prevent a lot of the, the bad things. Yeah. And Marty Snyder joining us on set now. Marty, you know, with great athletes, I always find it interesting after they retire, especially when they've been through something like that. Yeah. This is a guy who seems very content with where he uh, is. Yeah, and he's very happy. And my wife, Andrea, and I have become very close to Ernie and Kim. They, they joined our church before they moved away to, to, uh, to Charleston. But I would say Ernie's very content, very happy with his life now. And he's a man who walked away and didn't really have any regrets, even though he, he walked away sort of having some success, minus a uh, couple of accidents, Larry Mack. I think he was very happy with the decision to walk away. There was no doubt in his mind that he wanted to walk away. Well, and I think it was his family that did, did not push him in that direction, right. but I think looking at Kim and looking at, at, his, at his little girl and his little boy, and, and you know, he told a story about coming back up here, and we sat down in his first full year back, which would have been 96, we said, you know what, we got to go up there and we got to test. And I remember coming up here, and I was so nervous. I think before he went out, I was over to the restroom throwing up. And he went straight out there like nothing, like he just had raced here. Yeah. Uh, but I think, it's like he said, you, you the guy, you're the guys that remember it. I don't remember a thing about it. But funny, funny story quickly. He talked about racing the three car for the championship in 1994. And, and I think we had him. We had him exactly where we wanted What else did you say? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And Andy Petrie, who was a crew chief, he, he would wear himself out looking under our car, looking on top of our car. And finally, we were at Indy, and I said, Andy, you know, you and I are buds. i I, I got to tell you what our secret is. He went, what? I said, if you'll stand here and watch the back of our trailer, he's going to walk out in a Texaco uniform. <laughs> <laughs> about 30 seconds. Get out of here. That's good. You know, watching this, he talks about the first accident. Yeah. And then saying, okay, the best you can do is drive your daughter to school. He fought really hard. I don't think exactly. people realize how much rehab... This man went through to get back, to come back and be competitive on this level. Once he did that, he was satisfied. But at the same time, I've done a couple of track walks and stuff. He works tirelessly for brain injury. Did, did he talk a lot about that when you off yeah, the record? Yeah, and I'll talk he to talked him a right. lot about it, and that's really a big focus for him now is getting Race to Safety, that foundation, up and going, going in the right direction. And I, they're doing a fantastic job with it. You know, they fight it thing every foundation fights. You know, they need money and they need help and support. But they're, they've done a fantastic job with it. And, uh, and I, I keep coming back to Ernie. He's a very content man. No regrets. And he's just moving forward with life. He takes care of the farm. Kim's on him every day. He's got to mow the lawn out there, you know. It's hard to mow all those acres. And coincidentally, one of his biggest walks of the year is it's right, right here, here in Michigan, Michigan in but, August. All right. But guys, we got to keep it moving. Marty, thanks so much yeah. for coming up and sharing more of that with us. If you want more, head to NASCAR.com slash TNT. All of the Pride of NASCAR series there. We'll be right back.